So, what we see here is the, uh, the latest uh, German radar system for the night, for the night fighters. Yeah? To find in the night the English and American bombers. Yeah? Um, this was done with this all equipment. I have made uh, this equipment so like it was on the test panel in the uh, workshops and the, uh, and the uh, air, air, air bases. The parts of this system, most important, the indicator for, for high, low and left and right. Yeah? This is the indicator. <coughs> then we have the, uh, the, the um, antennas switch. This switch uh, uh, makes the antenna on top together, left, right together, right together, or down together, yeah, automatically. <coughs> but you can also do this by this antenna switch, by hand, when you press these knobs, yeah, and then you can see, you see only here or only here, yeah. So, this is the transmitter, sends the signal to the aircraft, then signal comes back from the aircraft, it was a receiver, and with this, um, with this wheel, <coughs> you can adjust the receiver, thus you have the best indication. Yeah? So, here is the power supply, and here is the uh, generator for the high tension, and this is the knob uh, off, on, and the fuse. Yeah? On this, two tubes, yeah, you can, you can see a line, and here is also a line. On this line, you, you can see the, uh, the targets, the, uh, uh, the, the enemies, um, in the distance, every point was two kilometers, yeah. You can see in, the, in, your, in your direction how much it is more high, or more low, yeah? And on this display, you see the same in, in, in your, your, your direction, what is more right or more left. The Fuge 220 SN2 had a maximum target detection capability of about eight kilometers, or five miles. Dieter explains that the areas bounded by the red ovals show ground artifacts or reflections. Because the aircraft flies at about 5,000 meters, or about 17,000 feet, and the Fuge 220 radar system looks down from the aircraft at an angle of about 30 degrees, so at typical operational altitudes, the system can see the ground, as here in our simulation, at a distance of about 7,500 meters. Our simulated traces here show two enemy aircraft ahead of us. The nearest is about 5,000 meters, or about 5 kilometers away. The other is a bit further, at about 6,250 meters. The screen giving the target's azimuth bearing on the left shows the first target dead ahead, with the furthest target a little to the starboard, or right, of the center line. We can see that the top spike in the red box, indicating the most distant target, extends further to the right of the center. The altitude screen on the right shows the first target a little higher than our aircraft, and the furthest target is at a slightly lower altitude. Again, this is indicated by the first target spike being slightly longer above the center line than below it. And for the second target, the spike is longer below the line than above it. In a moment, Dieter will switch the system on and you'll be able to see what these screens really look like. And, amazingly, what the system might have sounded like to the crew aboard a German night fighter. But first, let's finish our roundup of the Fuge 220 SN2 hardware by looking at the antennas. Okay, here you see a picture from a German night fighter, Heinkel 290. And on this uh, the front of this aircraft were four antennas yeah, for the uh, Fuge 220 SN2. Yeah? And what, what I have made? I, I made these uh, antennas here in reprodu reproduction, and you see the antennas in, this, in, the, in the correct dimensions 
in this sense and also in, in this sense, uh, in, according with the, with the working um, um, the station. Yeah? Also, the, the station you have seen before and the four uh, aerials, antennas, are working together so, and, and, and the dimensions is so like was in the original uh, 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 dimensions. Yeah? From here to here, from here to here, yeah? from here to here, and from here, from here to here. Yeah? Not, there's not this, this, this is not here. This we don't need. Yeah? Dieter explains that the elements of the dipole antennas are long like this because the Fuji 220SN2 emits very low frequency transmissions. This was necessary to avoid interference from British electronic countermeasures in the form of aluminium chaff, codename window. This was a technique to confuse radar systems where attacking bombers would eject strips of aluminium foil or aluminium paper in large quantities forming clouds like the one you can see in this picture of Lancaster bombers using window. The design of the antennas and their ability to operate together and as independent pairs gave the Fuge 220 a wide angle of target detection and made the system very effective, at least for a few months until new countermeasures were developed by the Allies. These antler-like antennas were very costly to the aircraft's speed and reduced its top speed by as much as 50 kilometers or 30 miles per hour. One of the factors that make Dieter's work of organizing this collection of equipment so unique is the fact that virtually everything on display here doesn't just look like it's in good condition visually, it's fully operational. And that includes the Fugi 220SN2. So Dieter is gonna power it up now and use a test signal generator so that you can see what the cathode ray tube displays looked like and, incredibly, what it might have sounded like to the crew of a German night fighter. This sound came as a bit of a surprise to us as it's coming through the radio microphone receiver we have attached to our camera. Now, we're not saying that the crew would have heard it as loud as you're going to hear it. The builders would have done everything they can to make sure that the electrical interference from the low frequency radar system did not interfere with the onboard radio transmission and the intercom system. But trying and achieving are different things. And when you operate radio detectors and amplifiers close to other powerful radio transmission systems, even ones working on very different frequencies, it's pretty common to have harmonics and radio frequency spillage from the transmitter leaking into these other circuits. So I'm pretty sure the sound you're hearing would have been familiar to the night fighter crews that used the Fugi 220. They may have only heard it in the background and then only if they pressed their headphones hard to their ears, but I'm sure this interference would have found its way into some piece of equipment on the plane and they would have heard this sound. Left. I left. Where are the targets? Okay. I close. We'll leave you to ponder the strange Nachtmusik of the Fugi 220 SN2 Night Fighter radar system. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more like this. Bye for now.